Hello friends, what's up? So from this particular video, I'll be talking in English as many of you have requested in the comment section. Uh, I'll also talk in Hindi in between uh, to explain a few concepts for Hindi medium students. But mostly from now onwards, I'll be talking in English. So from this particular video, we'll start a concept of financial inclusion. We talked a little bit about financial inclusion in the previous video also when we were looking after the banking system in India. In that we have already seen about priority sector lending, which is one of the norms by Reserve Bank of India for banks so that uh, rural areas and you know, activities like agriculture, MSMEs, etc. These are benefited by the banking system. And we have also seen how bank nationalization was a step towards financial inclusion. So that, you know, banking system should not just be accessible to the rich people, but also to the poor people. So that is the reason why banks were nationalized in two phases. Now, in this particular video, we'll see very basic thing about financial inclusion as to what is the meaning of financial inclusion. Let us understand that. Financial inclusion basically means that everybody in the society should be able to access these five things. Okay. So one is banking services, banking services, meaning to be able to open an account. Okay. To have transactions through account, to be able to get credit, institutional credit, as we have seen that in rural areas, poor people mostly depend on money lenders, which are non institutional forms of financing but they should be able to access institutional credit institutional credit as in through a bank a cooperative bank or a, a commercial bank or any other institute then the poor people or everybody in the society should be able to do investment for the future also like they should be able to save they should be able to invest right for the future then insurance Everybody should have an insurance for life. Okay, they should have a coverage for any medical emergency, for any accidental emergency, those kind of things. Social security as in for old age, like for example, if uh, after your retirement, you should have some kind of social security as to when you retire, you should get some form of pension, some income should be there. And finally, also financial literacy, you should understand how to make financial decisions, uh, in which instruments to invest how to do the banking activities, all those things. So these are these five things are known as the five pillars of financial inclusion. This is a very important thing. You if you understand this, you will understand the financial inclusion very properly. Now let us proceed. Uh, see if financial inclusion is present in an economy in a country, then what happens? So first thing that happens is that the savings can be channelized into investments properly. Now see how this happens. For example, if there if there are, uh, you know, some people in a village who have excess uh, money with them as to after their income minus their consumption, like whatever they need the money for their consumption from their income, that will be their savings. Now, if they are not able to access banking system or any other financial system, this money will remain with them. Okay, it will not be a kind of uh, thing, uh, it, 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 they will not be able to invest it into or they will not be able to save it into any formal banking system. Now, if this money remains with them, then they, this money will not be used for, you know, lending for loans, loans cannot be given if this money remains with them. And therefore, investments will not happen in the economy. As you see, banks perform the role of financial intermediary. So people will save and then banks will lend to the in businesses or industries or MSMEs to invest to do the business. So economic activity basically happens because of, uh, you know, savings getting channelized into investment. Therefore, the economy will grow. And best examples are USA, Japan. In USA, almost 80% of people, they invest into equity, bond markets, Okay, Japan also similarly. So they have a lot of channelization of savings into investments. 
and women also become financially independent see if women have bank accounts if they can access if women constitute almost 50 percent of our population and if 50 percent of our population are not included into the formal banking system then we cannot say that we are financially inclusive so financially inclusion means women should also become a member of the financial system they should be able to access all these five things okay all these five things and in a way they will become financially independent they will know how much to save when to withdraw the money how to invest when to invest and they can also have some form of social security for their old age so these are some of the benefits of financial inclusion now financial inclusion leads to economic growth okay how as i as i told you there will be more credit more investments and more economic activity this i have already explained to you how it happens ease of doing business will increase because uh, you know it will be uh, easy for banking system also to lend and uh, overall in the economy uh, as financial inclusion is more payments e payments are easy transactions are easy so doing business is also easy for example if there is a shopkeeper and if he has uh, you know some access to the formal banking system these days you have heard about this paytm and phone pay all this so because of this his business will grow because now uh, you know he will not be worried about the cash or currency transactions because through simple ways he can uh, uh, he, he can do his transactions he can he can do his business so uh, financial inclusion makes uh, doing business very easy poor people become participants of formal banking system formal banking industry poor people become a part of that definitely and therefore what happens more and more uh, uh, more and more savings get channelized into investments and poor people are also able to access new and new instruments like insurance so insurance business also grows right uh, then social security investments happen and all this money gets channelized into some form of investment in the economy and better monetary policy transmission also as we had seen in the previous lecture that if there is non-institutional financing if there is non-institutional financing then monetary policy transmission is low mpt is low because non-institutional financing meaning money lender they don't really follow rbi policy so if the rbi increases the interest rate or if it cuts the interest rates then monetary policy transmission won't happen properly because this non-institutional financing will anyways take place so if more and more people are into formal channels of financing then more and more people will depend on formal banking system and monetary policy transmission will be more efficient let us look at the main aspects of financial inclusion okay main aspect of financial inclusion is that they should be able to access financial resources see in our life we basically want to do a few things like when we talk about uh, financial planning or fin access to financial resources what do we mean by that we mean by that three things one is credit wealth creation and contingency planning okay in credit we should be able to access emergency loan uh, for example if there is any accident if there is any medical emergency anything happens then we should be able to access loans education loan also then consumer loans okay you want to purchase something like vehicle or anything you should be able to obtain those kind of loans you should be able to get uh, loans then housing loans if you want to construct a new new house you should be able to access loans livelihood loans for example if you want to do some business if uh, women want to start some new business they should be able to get livelihood loans at affordable rates so that you will be able to afford those loans loans are available through money lenders also but as i told you that they, they charge very high interest rate like up to 30 percent per annum but if you go through the formal banking channel these interest rates are definitely less so you should be able to access affordable credit the next one is wealth creation everybody aims for wealth creation right everybody wants to have some wealth with them now the wealth will remain in what form see usually we store wealth in the form of gold or land right so we say that you know we have so much gold we have so much land this is our wealth but you know the uh, gold and land that is just a traditional form of investment but there are new and new kinds of instruments also where you can invest and where you can have a lot of wealth creation 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल सेविंग सेविंग एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट इन टू ऑप्शन लाइक म्यूचुअल फंड स्टॉक्स एक्विटी दिस काइंड ऑफ थिंग सो दैट इज़ ऑल्सो वन ऑफ द वेज इन विच यू नो यू कैन क्रिएट मोर एंड मोर वेल्थ एंड फाइनली इट इज़ कंटीजेंसी प्लानिंग ना वॉट इज़ कंटीजेंसी प्लानिंग कंटीजेंसी प्लानिंग बेसिकली प्लानिंग फॉर द फ्यूचर ओके फ्यूचर प्लानिंग ओल्ड एज फॉर एग्जाम्पल पेंशन यू शुड बी एबल टू हैव सम काइंड ऑफ फिक्सड इनकम आफ्टर यू रिटायर सो इन द फॉर्मल चैनल इन द इफ यू आर इन द फॉर्मल सिस्टम यू विल डेफिनेटली गेट सम काइंड ऑफ पेंशन और यू विल हैव एक्सेस टू यू नो यूर सेविंग्स और अदरवाइज बट फॉर इनफॉर्मल सेक्टर्स देर आर नो पेंशन प्लान सो गवर्नमेंट्स हैव ओपन सम ऑफ द स्कीम्स दैट विल टॉक अबाउट बट Contingency planning is important, and it is known as retirement plan. There should also be some insurance, like after you die, or for example, if you accidentally die or you become physically disabled, you should have some kind of insurance to cover that. So these are basically the main aspects of financial inclusion. From the next video, we'll talk about financial inclusion in India, how it is happening, and what steps government is taking. Thank you.